Ready. Hello and welcome to Dancer Support Mission by Sabine Chalon for Shine Your Light. Today we have a new episode of Dancer to Dancer, Words of Wisdom. And I created this platform to meet the person behind the dancer and share with you all not only the highlights of someone's career, but also the challenges behind the scenes. Truly my wish is to bring healing into the dance world, dancing to heal, healing to dance. One artist at a time and one personal story at a time. I do believe that storytelling gives us an opportunity to learn from another person's experience and it can shape, strengthen or challenge our opinions and values. Hopefully this will allow you to embark or reflect on your own personal, he personal healing journey inspired by others' experiences. And of course, if you find those interviews valuable and interesting, please share them with your friends. So today I'm delighted to welcome uh, Carlos Luis Blanco Ramos. Welcome. And Thank I will, you so much. I will just say Carlos, okay, for now. Yes, okay. <laughs> delighted to have you. I haven't met you personally, but um, I've heard about you and I've seen some things about you. <laughs> so um, I'm really looking forward to hearing about your story. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. So nice to finally uh, meet each other. Yeah. So let's start, you know, as usual, yeah. what I ask uh, my guest is, you know, um, why did you start dancing? When did you start dancing? And, and when was the click where you decided this was going to be a profession? You know, because it's always a turning point. Okay. <laughs> Although you're from Cuba, so you were yeah. born as a dancer, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, something was there. Yeah, I'm from Cuba, um, but I came from a very small town in Cuba uh, called Teneria, really small in a countryside uh, that belongs to the province Pinar del Rio in Cuba. Um, I didn't have any information my family didn't have any information about dance we can start from there and by my childhood was very um i have a lot of freedom to play outside uh, going to the forest uh, interacting with other kids and i grew up in a really good uh, environment um but zero education about dance about art uh, that wasn't there in that small town, <laughs> but I was very active in in way like uh, doing uh, physical activities. Uh, I was very introverted uh, child. It means that I spend a lot of time alone, playing with myself, uh, exploring my creativity, mm -hmm. and I think that is quite connected with the uh, artists or dancers in this case. Um, in one one day, I think my my sister she we were playing outside in the in the in the ground, and she told me uh, I was quite flexible, <laughs> and, <laughs> and that was unusual. We didn't know even how to call it like a split or uh, when you are open your legs, and it was there until one day uh, someone from uh, from the house of uh, art. In, in the town they had some small competitions and <laughs> the one who was more flexible they will give something and my sister <laughs> she's older than me <laughs> and she knew, she knew about it and she just took me to that place hey come on you're coming with me and and yes i won that com a little competition there but how old <laughs> were you then how old were you i, th I think i was maybe eight Oh, okay. Eight, yeah, eight years old. And yeah, she got something. She got the prize. <laughs> um, and that was She excited. got a prize, so you got a prize. Yeah, she got it because <laughs> she had the idea. She only used me <laughs> a little bit for that. Um, but also, it's true, in Cuba, um, since you are a child, you are listening to music all the time. And you are dancing. I think it's in our blood is there at one point and about some neighbors they told my mom uh 
Uh, look, there is a very good school, a art school in the province. is far from here, but I think your child maybe will fit in that school because for how is him as a person. And uh, my mom, she, she said, okay, let me know. She didn't have any information at all, <laughs> but she took a bit risk. Um, and coming from Cuba, talking about the end of the 90s, um, it wasn't good to, good to see a male trying to be a dancer that was related with being a gay or and of course my father he didn't want it he said no Even my in child Cuba, is... where there, there's so much you know with Alicia Alonso and yes know, yes so yes yeah no, now it's different but talking many years ago yeah, it was like that and my father said no he's not going to do it and but my mom was she was very stubborn and she said, I don't care if that is going to be his future, I'm going to fight for that. And whatever he wants to be when he is an adult, that is his decision. And she was quite brave. We can say that that is the reason why I'm a dancer today. Um and short story, uh my mom, she was hiding everything. We have a specific day for the auditions and she didn't tell it to anyone, she, even to me. She only told me, okay, we are going to the house of your grandma. We are going to visit the, the house oh, of you your grandma. You didn't know either. No, I didn't know either. And I said, okay, we can go there. And the, the, the exam, uh, the audition is supposed to, to start at 8 a.m. And literally, we went back home around 12 p.m. But my mom said, maybe we can go to that place when the audition is going to happen. I said, okay, we can go. The thing is they were delayed. And and then for me, I was in shock because there are so little girls so ready to be a dancer. And for me coming from the countryside, I was so out of my place. And I was so a uh, child and my mom, she told me, are you okay? Are you feel okay here? And I said, no, I want to go. <laughs> I said, I, I want to go. I want to be here. <laughs> and she said, are you sure? I said, yes. <laughs> but someone came, a old woman, and she really uh, spoke with my mom with me, saying that, that that was a very good school. Even if I didn't want to be a dancer, maybe I can become a musician or something related with art. And I say, okay, okay. And that, everything happened so fast. My mom, she was literally running to in that uh, small town called Wane, trying to find uh, small leggings for me. <laughs> and she managed, she found one and they did a lot of exams. In Cuba, they take very serious, seriously, uh, um, when you are talking about auditions for for a child to be a dancer, it has to be a little bit with the uh, image. Uh, if your body maybe uh, will allow you to have a career as a dancer, and yeah, that was a lot of tests. Okay, let me see your shoulder, your legs, uh, your head, your flexibility, uh, your feet, and uh, everything happened so fast. I was just going, okay, what 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 I have to do? And I say, okay, do this. <laughs> For me, that was so weird, but that was in my body. The, physical, the physicality, the flexibility was always there. And yeah, they told me, okay, you need to go now to the school to do more exams. And my mom, she was, of course, staring like, what, what happened? What they tell you? What they tell you? <laughs> and, and then from there, uh, I did so a little- was all in one day? Only one day, that was the first exam, a lot of kids, but they accepted, accepted. And then I have a second test, but then I went to the, to the school school with more kids. And then they say, okay, uh, but I think now you need to learn more traditional uh, Cuban dance. And, and then I was more active, learning more skills. And almost before summer holiday, we had like five days, in the school and then is the final exam with a lot of kids and in the end yes they accept me 
to so start in the school. So how did your dad react to this? Oh, not so well. <laughs> not so well, but Cuban women, they are very strong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They are very strong. And the thing, the point is, I was stu- I was studying like one year at Taekwondo before all this happened and my father i think he had the idea oh my god my 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 boy is going to be i don't know world champion yeah yeah master and i was good but i didn't connect so well and maybe for him that was a little shock and i think they were more afraid what people will say about me being a dancer because literally we struggle a lot. It's not only me, a lot of the boys we were studying dance, uh, we were struggling like working on the street and they will say to us bad words related to be gay and no a man. And really that was the sad part of the story. Yeah, we can call now bullying. Like, yeah, a lot of that. Uh, yeah, that is the reason why I become to start a... Uh, Studying dance in Cuba and Pinar del Rio. I have a beautiful education there. But for me, the first year I was there just because they decided that was good. But I wasn't conscious what I was doing at that moment. Only in the second year, when I saw for the first time on TV, the National Contemporary Company in Cuba, they show on TV um, a choreography when they were dancing, a beautiful one. And they said, oh, I think I would like to do that one day. And then I say, yes, yeah, yes, I would like to do that. It means that for me, <laughs> my story is not like uh, maybe a lot of kids that they are being influenced uh, with, um, with a lot of information from a young age and they decided they want to dance. No, no, I think my passion came later. I think my body was ready to become a dancer, but not in my mind because I didn't have that information. And, but then I started enjoying, of course, I did three years in Pinar del Rio, in the province school. In Cuba, we have a lot of exams, a lot of tests. And in the last year, they decided if you are able to do the big exam to the national school in Havana, in the capital. And I was selected, and then I went to the capital for one week. <sighs> Almost 1,000 students trying to apply to get into the school around the world. And a lot of stress, I have to tell you, a lot of talent in Cuba. Yeah, yeah, that was insane. And... But in the end, they accept me. I was selected. Uh, the original plan was to have 15 boys and 15 girls. But because that year, the talent was very good. I think that was 20 and 20. And yeah, and that was another chapter uh, really being far from home. I didn't have the possibility to work, to go home every weekend. It was too far. It means I, I was going there twice maybe for Christmas and for summer holidays. And I think that made me strong as a person. So how old were you there? 11 or 12, something like that? uh, When I started uh, studying dance for the first time, I was 11 to 12. Mm -hmm. And when I went to the national school, uh, I was 14 to 15. Okay. Yeah, and then is I was there for three more years, and then I I was happy I finished the school, and it was very hard, very 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 hard. Strong technique. We have a Cuban technique, is beautiful. A lot of influence from the Afro coming from Africa, uh, Afro dance, um, mother dance, drum, uh, ballet. Uh, the installations they are beautiful. Um, yeah, when I was studying there, a lot of art, and we were uh, around us were the musicians, uh, actors. Yeah, yeah, that was it's a beautiful environment there to study. Mm-hmm. But you really have to to be focused and say, I want to be a, become a professional dancer. This is your life, if not, right? 
it's yeah. a choice and that you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think I was struggling because I was far of the family, distant, far away, but um, at the same time, of course, you make friends and um, yeah, you are able to do it just if you want, if you're focused. Um, yeah, that is like my beginning, beginning, <laughs> my introduction to dance. I have to say that I have beautiful t-shirts, beautiful, beautiful, amazing them, and really um, they were there to help us with a little in Cuba. Um, our studios, they were so limited with not so much to offer to us, even the, the floor, the dance floor wasn't the best, uh, or the the place when you had to sleep, or the food, the food, uh, not at all good. Um, and that is that is sad. Now that I'm I'm Copenhagen now, and I have been traveling around the world, and sometimes uh, it's difficult to to say, wow, I can see how people have so much privilege, mm-hmm. and they don't, and maybe they don't take advantage of that I like really I yeah really using it I can say because I know how is to train in a studio when you are in the bar and you are between a big hole on the floor between two holes in the floor or because you have to jump you have to look down because there is another big hole there uh, how is to finish the whole day training and then going and having for dinner maybe some rice and beans and taking a cold shower because you don't have hot shower even in winter yeah that is that is the how real is our situation there but that I have to say that make me a strong person and also how to really take care of things and give the important how important is a to dance and don't take it just an option. Yeah, it's my job, it's my profession, and I really I, I like to take care of, of that and my body, of course. So, what would you say? I mean, you've you've talked about it a little bit, you know, between the bullying and the the mm-hmm. hardship of studying in La Havana. Yeah. What would have been your biggest challenge? You know, in your in for you in in in, in this time of study. The B one was um, well when I went to Havana to the national school. Even when we were uh, using the same technique, Cuban technique, then we have to adapt to their technique in Havana because they have the best teachers, and that was the change. I have to do it. Um, that took time for us. People that we were coming from provinces, and and really, I say well, the only way that I can make it because the teachers they were like, "Oh, you adapt, or you are out." Yeah, they yeah. say you have you have exams. You have to uh, to grade more than eighty five or more than eighty to stay in the in the school. If no, you are out. And I really there, I said, okay, I have to do something. I have to do something. And I was asking other colleagues, other students and they were maybe in the last year like could you help me i remember i was training in a normal floor in the uh, around 11 p.m <laughs> yeah i was really i said okay i have to make it because uh i know from where i'm coming and i can see now that this is real mm-hmm. and i i can see if you manage to go to be a good student and be a dancer and then you get into a a company that was a way also how to travel how to know the world mm-hmm. and for me it was a little more that and of course the the loneliness to feel alone there during the weekends mm-hmm. in the weekend many people they were traveling because they were living on Havana or not so far from Havana but the people that we were living far from Havana we had to stay in the school and yeah, loneliness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so, what happened after your studies? You know, how did you 
<laughs> because you traveled to Europe and everything. So how did yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to say, um, I think I was very server in a natural way. And since I was in the national school in the second year. Stubborn or I started... resilient? I mean, you know, maybe resilient. Huh? Stubborn yeah. or resilient? Resilient is a better word, right? Resilient, yeah. Yeah, we can say that. Since my second year, I was working with a professional dancer and he, he had the idea to create a company. And I was training with him a lot in various parts of my holidays to, to perform a little bit. It means I was quite active from the school. And, and then one thing connected to the other things and then I stayed in Havana uh, after school. I was dancing two years with Tahin von Matos, that is his name. Uh, he really molded me mm -hmm. in a good way. Um, that was very important in my career because that was the beginning for me, coming from the school. Uh, then unfortunately, they have to close the, the company because I was a, like a project. And then I went to the national company, a contemporary company. Okay. called Danza Contemporanea de Cuba, director for Miguel Iglesias. And that was another school. It was so good. Around almost 50 dancers and everyone was very good. It's almost like they have two companies in one. And for me, I was in shock because you have 22 dancers performing all the time and you have 25 dancers just waiting. And they were so good like the other. Yeah, yes, that was that. And that was, for me, that was a way, okay, how can I do it? That was, you didn't have so much space. You have to wait. If someone got injured, you have to know. And you say, yeah, I know. I know how to do it. And then you will jump in, even if you didn't know. <laughs> but that was, that was content because I think they need to see that you were interested mm -hmm. in to be there because... They have a lot of tools, you know, to choose. That wasn't a problem to be with. No, no, no. They have a lot of good dancers, but they need to see a little extra. And then uh, I remember Tahim from Matos, he told me, if you are going to that company, to Danza Contemporanea Cuba, uh, you have to be very smart. You have to learn everything. You have to be focused, train everything quite hard if you really want to become a good dancer. They don't have your space. And of course, I did that, and in two years, uh, I was already in, like, in the first group. I was touring. My first tour was uh, to Mexico. I think that was in 2011, uh, in the beginning. And that was, you know, first time traveling outside of Cuba. <laughs> that was a little shock. <laughs> um, of course, it was cold also. <laughs> Yeah. But that was my first uh, tour outside of Cuba. That was beautiful. Um, and then I had my main tour to America, then performing in the Joyce Theater in New York, a lot of shows in Virginia, Philadelphia, uh, Boston. Uh, yeah, that was like my beginning going out of, outside of Cuba uh, with that company with the Danza Contemporanea de Cuba, where uh, when I became a principal dancer also. Mm -hmm. uh, so how did your parents react to this, you know, opening up for you, you know, the whole world? Oh, I think the distance helped a lot because they trust me. And also I think they were quite proud how well I was still in my life. They were always support me in this transition from the school to a professional life. Mm -hmm. Even my father was paying me my first month a year rent. And that was difficult to get $30 at that point. And then he said, he called me Nino. I said, I cannot anymore <laughs> because it's difficult here. And yeah, and then I have to mention that I started dancing working as a professional in contemporary company from nine in the morning until 4.30. And then I was going to work, uh, I went to work to the hotel during the night, doing like cabaret show, shows, 
uh, until 1 a.m. And then next day you have to start in the contemporary company at 9 a.m. again. Yeah, I was there almost two years because that was my way how to pay my rent. Yeah, wow. And that was difficult, I have to say it. And, and at the same time, I was doing some videos like with singers or dancing in some with some bands, like a group uh, in different parts of Cuba uh, for just a little, little, little more. Yeah. <laughs> Even I don't want to say it, but that was our reality there. But my parents, they, of course, they were supporting me in everything just with the little that they have. And when I started traveling, uh, of course, they were very happy for me. They were like, wow, you made it. You are, yeah, you're going outside of Cuba, this island, you are knowing, you are eating good foods, you are, yeah, you're discovering the world. And you know, every time that they saw me on TV, they were like, oh, we saw you, we saw you. And all my my neighbors from my little uh, village town also, they said, oh, we saw you, we saw you on TV. That was, and then it was, it was different, the connection, because they didn't think at that point, like, okay, you are a dancer or you are gay. No, they thought that someone who became from having nothing, 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 to be on TV or traveling. And for them, I said, they said, oh, wow, he, yeah, he's someone who is doing something different. And yeah, we want to support that. Nice, mm -hmm. beautiful. So when when did you know that you actually wanted to leave Cuba, you know, to work outside? I mean, was it something you wanted or has it just happened to you? Since I was in the national company, I almost I was there almost five years. And when I had the opportunity to go around the world, I said, Oh, this is different. <laughs> this is a different reality. And then I started thinking. I think I want something different. I, yeah, I don't see myself in Cuba so many years. And I was trying to find, but being Cuban, Cuban is difficult to travel, uh, no money. Uh, it's not like you have the money to go around the world and do auditions. Um, it means that when I decided to maybe, I wanted something better for my life. Uh, Carlos Acosta, he decided to create his own company in Cuba. And I was lucky that was part of that. I was from the beginning. And I think we, me and all the dancers, we, we say, okay, maybe this is not something maybe outside of Cuba, but I think this is going to be better than where we're working now. And then I say, okay. I'm going to work with him, with Carlos Acosta. And it means that I was there from the beginning, 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 for the first day. And, and I had a really good experience, of course. That was another level, a lot of explosion, going to a lot to London, and yeah, also traveling the world, learning different things, different training, more classical. Um, yeah, the open... I opened many, many, many doors yeah, for me. The repertoire from Carlos is pretty, I mean, I'm sure it's very uh, multi pluridisciplinary, but it's also very classical, right? So, yes, but he decided to have a contemporary company. If he's classical, we were half contemporary dancers, half classical dancers, and he was connecting a little bit and uh, mixing everything. But Acosta Danza uh, is a contemporary company, but sometimes. Uh, he was doing some classical prep. Uh, um, yeah, was you that, asked was me. Was that during COVID, actually? Uh, no, at uh, the beginning of the company, he founded the company in 2000, uh, I think, 16. Okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it took maybe one year and a half to have our debut in Dallas World mm -hmm. in London. And yeah, that was that was something very, very good. Yeah, 
pretty so, good. So then from that, it was like a trampoline, you know, for you to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was very happy there for four years. But then at one point in my life, um, I met my my boyfriend, Jung Le, for Norway. And it was a coincidence. Not coincidence, because he saw me through videos when I was doing my Cuban technique. It was like a private um, clip. Uh, he, he was wishing, oh, I have to go to Cuba. I have to learn that technique, that beautiful. And I was in New York performing with Acosta Danza. And and I think one thing connected with the other thing. Some friends of him saw me performing. And then I went to Cuba and we connect through Facebook. Like, oh, you're a dancer. I was a dancer. Oh, I was in New York. Oh, you live in New York. And and yeah, since that day, uh, I was using my, my data just to speak with him. Mm-hmm. At that point, we didn't have internet in our phones in Cuba in yeah. 2018. And yeah, we have a little uh, love story there, how we connect each other. And I think that combination, having a European boyfriend, also, with the time, I was four years in Acosta Danza, and at one point in my life, I said, it's not healthy, just live, work in Cuba, and just thinking, when is going to be the next tour to earn more money, bring that money to Cuba, and but then what is going to happen when you are not touring? After one month or two months, you don't have any money. In Cuba, you, you don't have money in the bank. You have the money you have. You know, cash, and then I said, "This is the moment." And of course, Young Le, he said, "I think that also I can be very important for our relation." And and then I said, "Yeah, it's a moment." And I connect with um, Goya Montero mm-hmm. because being a Costa Danza, uh, he was there, and he saw me dancing before, and he told me, "If you one day you are in Europe and you are trying to find." It work, please knock the door. Right. And I really I want to work with you. It took time for us to work together, but in the end we we did it. And I started in Nuremberg Ballet in twenty twenty, in September twenty twenty, uh, during COVID. Mm-hmm. That was tough. Uh, yeah, to say bye bye to Cuba in that moment, but that was another chapter of my life. They really, really. Uh, Super, more than happy. I took that decision going to Nuremberg Ballet to work with Goya Montero. That was another level uh, as a professional dancer, artist, like really living, living for first time in another country, not visiting the country, no sleeping in hotels. Um, of course, my mom was like, what is this? Uh, of course, Germany, different system. And yeah, with Goya Montero, uh, I, I had really good experience there. Then seeing his choreographies, but also another uh, uh, diverse uh, choreographers, mm-hmm. international choreographers. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. very, very active. Yeah, yeah, very active, very physical. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very, uh, the phys- very strong physicality. But for me, it was good because we trained that way in Cuba, like yeah. with strong physicality until your body is able to do it. And and I believe if you are young enough, if your body, your, your body is young enough, if your body wants, why not push your limits, create, you know, yeah. more. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a moment because at one point of the life, your body is not going to be so young so and is that, you is that what you decided to to move on? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually not, because I I I think I'm in the top of my career, yeah. and that was more um, personal reasons. Um, think a little more about the future, mm-hmm. and also trying to find to connect also in the place where you live in. Um, something happened in Nuremberg. Nuremberg to work in the theater is beautiful. Maybe the city is so small, and sometimes the dancers they always travel 
to to find extra motivations or yeah very well like a cozy place yeah. uh you have to travel yeah. for that Those big companies unfortunately right yep and that was one of the main reasons and yeah me as young lady, we didn't connect so much at one point and then i say okay i think um i have to think a little bit how to build my future and because i know i can continue dancing but i also have to build myself maybe as a teacher as a choreographer uh, i would like to explore more a uh, different way how to work when you are creating and then i saw um the dance dance theater they have an open audition for the director for new director and i saw marina mascarel uh, got the job and then i say okay let me read a little bit about here about her work works um, and i said yes i think this is the moment that i was waiting to try to work with a female the director okay. and yes because i, I was yeah everywhere right now i mean we are yeah. everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i was wishing for that and i say yes why not um i spoke a lot with my with Yongle, my boyfriend and and i said we can try it. we knew the city before the country i think is beautiful even the dance community is bigger than uh, in nuremberg because in nuremberg if you are not part of the company or the theater you you don't have like you're not going to be a freelancer in that case okay. it's not possible Carlos, you know are we getting to the last uh, to the last okay Less thing a minute. okay so i uh, would just like to I mean, really, thank you. I mean, I hope you'll be very happy in Copenhagen, uh, where you where you are right now, right? Yes, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy here and try to understand more the the system, the way that they that we work here. That will take a little time. It's different, but hopefully, yes, I will let you know okay. how things are. Well, I wish Good you the time. very, very best, and thank you so much for taking the oh, time to be with me today. Thank you, thank you so much for the interview. Also, and a beautiful story. So it made me oh. very, um, it touched me deeply. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Have a nice day.